Hello, in this video we are going to see how to use knitting techniques to achieve a specific uh, uh, control on the source IP addresses inside a packet exchanged between different LANs. So in this design we have two LANs. The first one is 172.16.0.0 and the second one is 172.31.0.0. So these two LANs are interconnected through routers RT1 and RT2. The two routers themselves are connected using the serial link as depicted in this diagram. Uh, so now the first thing we're going to do is the following. All the packets generated from router from LAN 172.16.0.0 and targeting network 172.31.0.0 those packets, when they reach this network, should have their source IP address translated into the same subnet address of this of the destination network. So all IP packets coming from network 172.16.0.0 should have their source IP addresses within subnet address 172.31.0.0 as if they were originated locally on the same lab. So now, for example, a packet sent from PC0 to PC2 or PC3 or a packet sent from PC1 to PC2 or PC3 also as well should be viewed as if it was generated on the same LAN as where PC2 and PC3 are connected because there its source IP address will have the same subnet address as PC2 and PC3. How to do this? We are going to rely on NATing to perform the uh, required objective. So the first thing we are going to do is to go to router RT1 and have a look at its configuration. So I go to the command line interface, enable and display the running configuration. So as you see, these are the IP addresses of the fast Ethernet 00 connected to LAN 172.16.00. And this is the serial interface IP address 192.168.0.1. So the one that is connected to this part, this side of the router. Uh, we don't have any routing protocol, so what I'll do first is to configure routing, static route. Static route says that all the packets destined for network 172.31.0.0, and I have to specify the subnet mask, should be sent through, for example, the local interface, should be forwarded through the local interface 0 slash 0 slash 0. I could also have used the next half IP address, which is 192.168.0.2, but I just want to show this example to make it as simple as possible. So this is for my static route that I entered in the router RT1. Now I go to router RT2. Now in this router RT2, of course, I'm going to have a look at this routing table, at the running uh, configuration, sorry. So show. Okay, so this is the IP address of the fast Ethernet 00 interface, 172.31.0.254. And this is the IP address of the serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 on the other side of the router. Now, what is missing on this router is routing protocol or routing table or whatever. So now what I will do, I'm going to configure static route, IP route, to show to the router how to forward packets destined to network 172.16.0.0. The static route says the following, all the packets heading to network 172.16.0.0, specify here the subnet mask, should be forwarded through the local interface, which is the which happens to be the serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 0. Okay, so now I achieved that. But also I will say that the serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 will be considered as a internal or an inside interface. So it will be it's like it's connected to an inside network. All the packets coming from that inside network will have their source IP address translated. So now I'll configure this interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 as an internal or an inside interface using this keyword. The interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0 will be, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this one will be configured as an outside interface, as an outside interface. Now I have to add a NAT rule which says that IP NAT inside, IP NAT inside source static. 
what I will translate, I will translate the IP address of PC0 because it will be the source IP address for all packets generated from PC0 to network 172.31.0.0. So I will do the following. 172, translate 172.16.0.1 into 172.31.0. Let's make sure that there is no conflict. So I will choose host address 10. And second entry in the natural it will be translating the source IP address 172.16.0.2, this IP address here into 172.31.0.20. Right. So now let's check again the routing table. So we have a static row that points how to reach that points to how to reach network 172.16.0.0. Now I go back to PC0. And PC0, I will check the IP configuration. So I see here the IP address, the subnet mask, and the default gateway, which is the IP address of the fast Ethernet interface of router RT1. Now I, I open the command prompt, and from the command prompt, I first do thing, one thing. I, I ping the default gateway 172.16.0.254. Does it work? Yes, it works fine. Uh, the next step will be pinging the uh, PC2, which is on LAN 172.31.0.0, second LAN, so 172.31.0.1. Does it work? So let's wait and see what happens. So I'm expecting to see a timeout and then a reply. See, then there is a reply. So everything works fine. So I try also to ping the second host. Okay, so maybe we'll see a timeout. Yes, it will time out, so it, it will take some time to get reply, and then here it is, it's working. Let's go to router RT2 and see what's going on here. I will display the, the, NAT, the NAT table and see that all the IP packets with source IP address 172.16.0.1, now this IP address is considered as inside local IP address since the interface is connected to internal network, would be translated into inside global IP address 172.31.0.10 uh, on the um, on the second line side. So this IP address is translated into this, and this one will be translated into this. And uh, like this, the I open, I go to PC1, and from PC1, I go to desktop, open the command prompt. And from command prompt, I'm going to ping 172.31.0.1, right, it works. And then I will ping 172.31.0.2, it works also. Let's go again to RT2 and display the NAT translation table, okay? So the NAT translation table shows the same thing. The inside local IP address 172.16.0.2 has been translated into 172.31.0.20. We can do similar things for those packets generated from network 172 in the network 172.31.0.0 and targeting network 172.16.0.0. So what I will do is very simple. I go to router RT1 and then I will say, okay, the, inter the serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 will be viewed as an inside interface, whereas interface first interface 0 slash 0 will be viewed as a, an outside interface. Now, I build my natural IP NAT inside source static. Now, I say the following. All the source IP address 172.31.1.0.1 be translated into 172.16.0.10, right? And all packets with source IP address 172.31.0.2 will have their source IP address translated into 172.16.0.20, right? So now I go back to, uh, I go to PC2, sorry. I go to PC2 desktop. I check my IP configuration. Right, I open the command prompt and I try to ping um, the IP address on the first line 172.16.0.1. Does it work? Yes, it works fine. I do the same thing by pinging the second host 172.16.0.2. I go to PC3, open command prompt, and repeat the same 
the same thing. So I think 172, 16.0.1, and ping 172.16.0.2, so everything works fine. So if you want to see this in real time, we're going to um, enable the debugging, debug ipnet, right? So debugging is opened. So let's do something. Uh, for example, I come here and I issue continuous ping to host 172.16.0.2. Now let's see something interesting here, is that the source IP address 172, uh, okay, I can stop the debugging, all right, I stop the debugging, scroll up a little bit and see what happens. Um, okay, so all the packet with source IP address 172.31.0.1 uh, have had their source IP address translated into 172.16.0.10. And the packet will be then destined to IP address 172.16.0.2. In fact, host on this network will view all incoming packets as if they were generated from the same network to which they are hooked, which is network 172.16.0.0. Now you can think of the various and different applications where you can use this technique. Thank you for viewing this video. This is Hakimadish. Bye.